In this video, we're going to be talking about an object on a ramp. There's a five kilogram box that's sliding down a ramp and it says, what is the coefficient of kinetic friction if the box accelerates at a rate of 5.9 meters per second per second? All right, so the first thing that we always want to do to start off our force problems is go ahead and draw our force diagram. So we can go ahead and start off with our force of gravity straight down towards the center of the earth. Then we have our normal force that goes up perpendicular from our surface. And then according to our description, it's asking what is the coefficient of friction and it says it's sliding. So we have the irregularities of the surface that are opposing the slide. So we have FFK, force of kinetic friction, and that is it. All right, now when analyzing an object on a ramp, one of the big differences that you could probably see already in red is that the X and Y axis is tilted on an angle. The reason for that is because if the surface isn't completely flat, then the potential motion of the object is only going to go along this angle. So instead of considering this the regular X and Y axis, you would consider it parallel to the surface or perpendicular to the surface. And there's my perpendicular symbol and there's my parallel symbol. So everything is gonna be treated the same as a regular force problem, except our X and Y axis is tilted. So it's parallel to the surface and perpendicular to the surface as usual. Now with that being said, if you take a look at our three forces, we have our normal force that's right along the vertical axis. We have our force of friction that's right along the horizontal axis. But FG is actually sitting in between both of those axes. So when something is on a ramp, it sort of feels like the Earth is pulling it on an angle, even though it actually isn't. So since FG is in the middle of our parallel and perpendicular axes, what we want to do is break it up into components. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We are going to pull part of it down as its perpendicular component that applies pressure on the ramp. And then we can call that our FGY. And then we have our component that goes parallel to the ramp that allows it to potentially slide down the ramp, which is our FGX. Okay, and then we have the angle of the actual incline itself. That 30 degrees translates to this angle right over here. And this is always your 90 degree angle. So every time you do one of these problems, the part that you want to make sure you focus on doing correctly is have your FG straight down. That's always going to be the hypotenuse of your triangle. And then you're going to draw a perpendicular and parallel component and then make sure that your FG stays opposite your 90 degree angle and stays the hypotenuse of your triangle. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this triangle and I'm just going to draw it off to the side over here just so I have a little bit more room. And then I'm going to go ahead and solve for all the components of that triangle before I continue any further.
so I solved for all the components of my triangle. So what I did is I used that 30 degree angle and went ahead and solved for my hypotenuse. We know that our hypotenuse is the main force of gravity. So we're gonna go ahead and use mg mass times 9.8, which gives us 49 Newtons. From there, we just have to use two trig functions. First of all, I used the sine of 30 degrees so that I could use the opposite end and then put that over my hypotenuse and I got FGX over 49. I cross multiplied the 49 up and over, which is the same thing as multiplying each side by 49 and I got 24.5 Newtons for my FGX. And then on the bottom part over here, I did the same exact thing, except I used cosine so that I could get the adjacent side and then also use my hypotenuse. And then I got 42.44 Newtons for my FGY. Okay, so now we're ready to set up the main part of our problem. That's all the preliminary work that we needed to do. Now we can go ahead and sum up our sum of forces in the X direction, which is sometimes known as the sum of forces in the parallel direction. And then we can also sum up our forces in the Y direction, which is also known as the sum of forces in the perpendicular direction. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my formulas based on my diagram, and then we'll start to plug in some numbers shortly after. All right, so I set up my formulas. What I did was I created a positive and negative direction. I said that going down the ramp is the positive direction and the friction opposing it was the negative direction. So I took my new component here, FGX, that goes straight down and made that my positive. And then I subtracted the force of kinetic friction because that's in my negative direction and our net force or some of the forces always equals m times a so i put that right over here and then on the other side i made up perpendicular our ramp the fn and then i made the down perpendicular into the ramp my fgy from there i went ahead and put fn minus fgy equals m times a so the sum of the forces always equals m times a, but I know that there is no vertical movement or acceleration. So therefore I could say that it's zero Newtons. Now from there, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in all of my numbers and see what I come up with. And it looks like we want the coefficient of kinetic friction as our final, final answer that we are looking for. So I'm definitely gonna to have to use the formula, the force of friction equals mu fn, which is the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my numbers and see what I come up with from there. All right, so I plugged in everything that I know at this point. I started with my sum of forces in the X direction. We already saw for FGX earlier in purple right over here. And then I subtracted the force of friction. I don't know my mu sub K or my FN at this point. And then we do actually know our mass and our acceleration based on the actual problem itself. It gave us those numbers. I went ahead and slid down to the sum of forces in the Y direction. 
and then we have the normal force minus the fg in the y direction again that equals zero we still don't know the normal force but we do know the fg y component so we can go ahead and finish solving for fn and that is 42.44 so that seems to be very useful because I was missing an FN over here. So if I plug in that FN, that would mean I have all of my numbers in this formula except my mu sub K. And that's our final thing that we want to solve for. So let's go ahead and finish off that problem. All right, now we've finished solving for our coefficient of kinetic friction, which came out to 0.12. Uh, that is one of the few numerical values that you can report that doesn't have a unit because it's the ratio of two forces that end up canceling each other out. So just to recap, your first and most important step is definitely drawing your force diagram and being conscious that your X and Y axes are somewhat tilted into a parallel and perpendicular axis. So after you draw your vectors and arrows all over, you take a look at which ones are parallel and perpendicular to your ramp. From there, you will always notice that FG sits in between the parallel and perpendicular axes. And then you take the angle of your ramp and that's going to translate up into this little corner of the triangle. And then you create a 90 degree angle opposite of your FG and your FG is going to be the hypotenuse of your triangle. From there, like I said, I tend to pull the triangle off to the side so I have more time to work, uh, more space to work, excuse me. And then I solve for my uh, FGX and FGY components with sine and cosine. And then we're ready to create the sum of forces in the X or parallel direction and then the sum of forces in the Y and perpendicular direction. You wanna make sure you're very careful setting up your formulas and that you identify which directions are considered positive and which directions are considered negative. So you can properly put minus signs or negatives where they belong. Your very last step you wanna do is plug in numbers. I generally say a good rule is just basically plug in every single number you possibly can. And then you'll sort of see where the numbers fall into place, see what types of things are missing and what types of things you're able to solve for. And then from there, hopefully you will get your final solution. And that's it. Thank you for watching and listening.